feels really weird to hear a C8 sound like this. Hey everyone, it's Ryan at GPI. Standing in front of Desmond's uh, 2023 Corvette C8. So we've done a bunch of work on this. We documented our results along the way. And I wanna go ahead and drop some numbers for you and talk about our build and let you know what we did to the car and what we encountered along the way, kind of our experiences with the, our first cam head C8. You know, we've done a couple power adders, a twin turbo and a couple pro charge C8s. I would say that uh, this car NA will run circles around the power adder, you know, turbo and the pro charge stuff that's out there right now because a pro charge car on our dyno makes about 580. This makes about 15 less horsepower. But on the highway, we don't have heat soak with the NA setup. So we have repeatable power. And this thing has a killer torque curve and an RPM curve. I think this is probably a better feeling combination than just a stock engine with a pro charger. And you can do it for about eight to $9,000 less than what you can do a pro charge setup. Install, turn key out the door. We rolled this thing in. It only had like 2,000 miles on it or something, 2,500 miles, low mileage setup. Strapped it to the rollers to see what it made stock. Uh, on our dyno, it made 449 rear wheel horsepower and 437 rear wheel torque. Uh, we went ahead and we already had the ECM unlocked by the time we strapped it to because I wanted to be able to test as much stuff on the same day as possible. So I went ahead and wrote a tune to see if I could maximize and make any improvements over the factory tune and it was very, very minimal. Uh, I did pick up about seven horsepower in the upper RPMs. Most of that was just due to being able to lean it out just a little bit and I made just a couple of little small VVT cam changes and I can't say that it even made much difference because, you know, from pull to pull, you may vary one or two horsepower, one or two foot pounds of torque. So I was, it showed I was up a couple of foot pounds of torque. I don't put much faith into that, but I did definitely pick up a little bit up top uh, just by trimming a little bit of fuel out of it up top on the commanded AFR. That was tune only on 93 octane. Then, we moved on along to, uh, we put the headers on it, some Cook's headers, and we picked up pretty good power. We ended up going to 466 horsepower and 450 rear wheel torque. And that's from 456 tuned. So basically tuned on both setups, just with the Cook's headers, it made um, 466. We went ahead basically and did a Haltech airbox on the car. Same day, the airbox wasn't here. We had to pull the car off the dyno. I put it back on the dyno, and instead of 466, this next time it was on the dyno, made 470. Basically with headers and tune only, it made 470. But I wanted to baseline it again, then do the Haltech airbox on the same day. So we did the Haltech airbox, and we picked up six horsepower, six and a half horsepower, it made 476.5. And it picked up three foot-pounds of torque from 457 to 460. So that was pretty much where we stopped with the basic bolt-on stuff. So from there, we went ahead and we went on with our build. We dropped the engine out of the car, dropped the cradle, uh, went through that process. It's just time-consuming, not terribly uh, complicated to do. We're flashing a C8, which is now complete. Um, interesting enough, the ignition has to be off to flash a C8 um, after being powered on. So I'm actually going through the flash process right now, which doesn't take very long. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it starts and runs. Oh, it runs. Yay! But I haven't touched anything with the uh, uh, neural network stuff yet or anything. 
I didn't make any fuel changes, just idle changes to start it up and log it, kind of right. go from there. But basically, I wanted to maximize our build potential for the 6800 RPM and below our you know curve that we have to work with. Since the transmission control module is not tunable. Zero controls, sir. It seemed as if I was running into a fuel shutoff that was not engine tuning related at 6800, 6900 RPMs. So I needed to maximize my combination, you know, basically off idle to 6800 RPMs. I didn't really want to have to give up anything anywhere if I didn't have to. We ported and milled the factory heads. Interesting to note, we did do something different on this head port. We m removed minimal material out of the intake port, mostly valve job and bowl blending. It is actually a different port than our standard LT1 head porting. Thought process is I wanted to keep air velocity up or we wanted to keep the air velocity up and try to help the flow as much as possible but not oversize that port. We didn't want to kill it down low to make horsepower at an RPM that we can't even reach currently with this setup. So new LT2 head port program, we milled them 25,000 so effectively that bumped our compression ratio to about 12 and a half to one or excuse me 12 one to 12 two to one just under 12 and a half and that's still pump gas friendly with the SS2. We decided while we had the intake off, we would port the intake manifold, put the uh, KTEC 87 to 95 millimeter adapter on it, and put the KTEC 95 on it. So with those changes, still pump gas, pump 93, with our SS2 cam, the addition of the ported and milled heads, slight bump in compression, and then the intake and throttle body mods, we went from 476, we went up to 536.9, so basically 537. Torque jumped to 486.7. So I started the cam set up about 3,200 RPMs, the dyno pull. 3,200 RPMs and up, we were still over the factory cam curve. We didn't lose any torque all the way down to 3,000 RPMs. So that was awesome. Gains versus stock, 449 to 537, huge gains. Um, probably not the amount of gain you would see on an LT1 car, but keep in mind the LT2 has a little bit revised cam profile. It already comes with an LT2 intake on it, so you know the LT1 when you mod it kind of gains a little bit more. It makes up a little ground because the LT2 already starts better, but doesn't really lend you as much to gain with the intake manifold mods and, and everything like the LT1 cars, since the LT2 intake is already a good bit better than the LT1. Um, then we moved on to E85 DSX flex fuel kit. We're gonna do a road test with flex fuel. See what this thing lays down 60 to 130. Hopefully, hopefully my draggy's charged up. Oh, no drag you found. Sweet. So it's dead. So all I can do is try to go off of 60 to 130 on the log, I guess. Because I'm going to wait for it to charge up. Oh, this thing is so ridiculously smooth.
Again, really good gains. Went from 537 to 564.5, so 565. Torque jumped all the way from 487 to 513. This thing's making 500 plus foot pounds of torque from 4,000 RPMs and up. Killer torque curve. Again, not giving up anything down low versus our factory setup and gaining everywhere through the curve. Gains growing exponentially as the RPMs increase. Killer combo. I've done a lot of driving and testing on the car. I don't have any complaints. Didn't really know what to expect with the drivability with the dual clutch setup. It's smooth on initial takeoff. It drives smooth, shifts great, just like factory, obviously. And there's no cam surge or cam buck at low RPM cruising. So no negative things to mention with the drivability of the car. It did great. Tuning aspect, it being a new platform, people not knowing what to expect, myself included, it wasn't bad in my opinion. If, if you're not comfortable with them, please send them my way. I, I really liked it. I really enjoyed tuning the car. Some you know, changes from previous Gen 5 LT tuning platforms, obviously there are some differences. Uh, neural network being one of them with the air, airflow model. All in all, HP tuners worked well for us in doing everything we needed to do with the car. Now I just need them to unlock the TCM so we can crank the RPM up and, uh, and get more aggressive with the combination. So. Hope you guys enjoyed the information. It was fun doing this first C8. Look forward to seeing the package on our website. We'll have some packages, turnkey, cam head installs, the bolt-on installs, tuning, all that literature will be updated very, very soon, probably by the time you see this video. And uh, stay tuned, guys. We appreciate you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the content. Thanks.